Assalamu alaikum and welcome back once again to Today in African History with Baba Shaka. I'm Baba Shaka and today is April 13, 2021. Now, exactly 205 years ago, some of our ancestors on the island of Barbados, they got together and decided that there needed to be a change in the status quo. They decided that the time had come to resist the conditions that existed and to create a new reality in the lives and the lives of African people throughout the island. Okay. Now, resistance among enslaved Africans began the moment they were captured. Some of them tried not to get on the ships. Some of them tried to jump off the ships. You know, it just took many different forms. Some chose to continue speaking their native languages in private. Some could perform African rituals like drumming and dancing and so on. Some appeared to accept Christianity but secretly practiced their religion. Some ran away. Some poisoned their masters. And some of them got like glass and ground it up into a fine, fine powder. And then sprinkled it in the master's food, cutting up his insides, you know, when he eat. So some of them pretended to be sick in order not to work. And others damaged tools and machinery. But well, many Africans also showed their resistance through rebellion. Now, the most successful rebellion took place in Haiti in 1791. Here, the enslaved population drove out the French and the British and the, and the Spanish and set up the first black republic. In Jamaica, a group of Maroons, or we call runaway Africans, formed their own settlements in the mountains. And for the next 150 years, they fought against the British and helped to free other enslaved Africans. Slave rebellions tended to be less threatening in Barbados than in other Caribbean islands. See, Barbados had a well-armed police and military force stationed there. And also, there was no place to hide. Because unlike Jamaica or St. Lucia, who would have mountains, Barbados is a, relatively, is a relatively flat island. And most of the land had been used to cultivate um, sugarcane, as much sugarcane as possible. So there was really no place to hide. Uh, right? But on Sunday, April the 14th, 1816, a major rebellion broke out in Barbados. The rebellion was carefully planned and organized by the senior enslaved men and women who worked on several plantations and estates. Now, the rebellion started in the evening in the southeast parish of St. Philip, spread into most of the Caribbean, uh, most of the southern and central parishes of Christ Church, St. John, St. Thomas, St. George, and parts of St. Michael's. Now, you notice the Europeans come and steal somebody's land, they name it after all their saints, and then they do a lot of unsaintly stuff to people in these places. Now, three days later, the rebellion was put down by the lo local militia and the imperial troops. Like I said, there was troops stationed there on the island. Martial law was declared on Monday, April 15th, and wasn't lifted until the 12th of July. Now, an African-born enslaved man called Bussa, or Bussa, led the rebellion on Barbados. Now, very little is known about him, except that he was a ranger on the Bailey Plantation in St. Philip. Now, a ranger was the head officer among the enslaved workers on an estate, and he would have to look after the boundaries and fences and deal with the day-to-day -day business arising between the estates. And this meant that the rangers traveled throughout the area. And it is likely that Bussa enjoyed the confidence and respect of both the black community and the plantation owners. Now, some of these rangers, you know, they were, had held a position as in, in the United States, we would say house Negroes, right? So they had certain privileges. They could move around and so on. And many of them tend to look down on their, their brethren on, on, on the plantation. And oftentimes they would even tell the master what was going on, like plan, um, run away, plan, rebel, and stuff like that. But Bussa was different. Bussa planned the uprising with people from different estates. This included Jackie, the driver of the Simmons estate, King Wiltshire, or Wiltshire, who was a carpenter at Bailey's, and Nancy Grigg, who was an illiterate domestic worker on the Simmons estate. The uprising started at Bailey's estate. And it was an attempt by the enslaved people to change society on Barbados. They believed that Barbados belonged to them and they wanted the freedom from the plantation owners. 
Well, you see, an act to end the slave trade had been passed in the British Parliament in 1807. Now, that was to end the slave trade. I mean, the British said it was illegal to bring Africans from Africa across the water, but it didn't end slavery. Slavery still continued in the British West Indies until 1838. But in 1815, the enslaved thought that they were going to gain their freedom when Governor Leith returned from Guadeloupe, another Caribbean island. They believed that he was bringing a quote-unquote free paper with him to set them free. But this didn't happen. So Bossa commanded about 400 men and women against the troops. Now these included the West India Regiment, which is an all-black branch of the British Army. Notice they always use your own people against you. Okay? Now Bus himself was killed in battle and his troops continued to fight until they were defeated by superior fighter power. Because the British had horses, they had guns, they had they had cannon, that three cannon, that swords, pikes, and everything else. And of course the, the Africans only had the tools that they worked with, some of them only had their hands. Now one white civilian and one black soldier were, were killed during the fighting. Compared to this, 50 enslaved people died in battle and 70 were executed in the field. I mean, as soon as they were captured or wounded, they were executed. Seven, another 300 were taken to Bridgetown for trial, of which 144 were executed and 132 sent away to other islands. Buss's rebellion was one of many rebellions that took place in the Caribbean over the centuries, showing that African people, black people's determination to gain their freedom Rebellion was their attempt to influence the abolition movement. Now, in 1985, a large bronze statue was put up in Buss's honor on the JTC Ramsey Roundabout situated on the ABC Highway in Barbados, and it symbolizes the breaking of chains at emancipation. Now, despite the failure of Buss's rebellion, Buss is regarded as one of the historic figures who fought for Bajan freedom. Okay? Later on, we'll talk about some of the other slave rebellions that took place in other parts of the Caribbean, including the 1763 rebellion that took place in Burbison, which is now today Guyana. But I want to thank all of our subscribers. It is your continued support that enables us to keep bringing these daily lessons. To those of you who have not yet subscribed, we invite you to hit that subscribe button down below and add your much-needed support to this project. Please like and leave a comment down in the comment section. Let us know uh, what you think or how you feel about this, these programs. But most importantly, please share, especially with the young amongst us. So until tomorrow, inshallah, this is Baba Shaka with Today in African History. Masalaam.